So my interest in mulch is sourced in part to some volunteer work I've done in my HOA as it relates to water harvesting in common areas. Where I live in the desert southwest, the idea is to use mulch to reduce the loss of moisture in common areas that my HOA pays to irrigate. The idea is not only to save water, but to create conditions for healthier vegetation without relying on industrial fertilizers. If you'd like to learn more, here's some additional background copied from Brad Lancaster's book, an excellent resource for water harvesting and permaculture concepts. I'll include a link in the description of this video. So here's a summary of my setup. This is a basin I cleared in my backyard for logging air temperature, shallow soil temperature about one inch beneath the basin surface, and deeper soil temperature about six inches beneath my setup. All this data will be logged to an Adafruit IO dashboard using a Feather Huzzah ESP8266 for ease of data review from inside my home in real time. If you want to duplicate this, note that I couldn't find the exact same sensors I used in the Fritzing library, so I matched the colored wires that come standard with the SHT10 and AM2315 available through Adafruit to their respective pins. Overall, that process helped me turn this mess into this, something that's more easily managed and that can be installed into one of these solar-powered remote environmental monitoring boxes already summarized in a prior chapter of this series. Here's a snapshot of the temperature profile for those three sensors in late July. Here you can see when we witnessed our first monsoon and the impact that had on relative temperature between all three sensors. Note that before the storm, shallow soil temperature captured by the green line is significantly higher than air temperature, but after the storm, the trend is reversed with shallow soil being relatively cooler than air temperature. After the storm, you can see here that there are two peaks where air temperature is higher than soil temperature. And this is the first day when shallow soil temperature rises to the same level as air temperature. And finally, here's the first day when shallow air temperature briefly exceeds air temperature. With this data in hand, I can come up with an estimate of how long it takes the shallow soil profile to dry out using temperature as an analog for moisture where it takes about 80 hours for the cooling effects of soil moisture evaporation to start to become muted in the shallow one inch layer of soil in this basin. And this shows the general trend over time after that storm event, suggesting that cooling from deeper evaporation is being buffered as additional moisture from the basin is lost in the absence of rain. You can also see here that the humidity response in the shallow soil layer is drying out over time as a result of the sun baking the soil, a trend demonstrated by the green line, but less obvious in the deeper soil profile shown in red. This mirrors what I expected to see based on references suggesting that soil humidity is susceptible to evaporation in shallow soil, but less sensitive to change in the deeper profile. Okay, folks, so I've got my baseline set up. I'm going to go ahead and spread the mulch that I just generated. Uh, today, uh, August 3rd, it's about 8.30 in the morning. And uh, let's see how this impacts my results moving forward. And here's the basin. And you can see that... Uh, as of the last video, what I did do was uh, spread a little bit more um, mulch. This was just stuff that I raked up around my yard. And rather than throwing it out, I just decided to throw it on top of the mulch that I'd already put there. Had to angle my, uh, my solar panel so that it's facing a little bit more to the south uh, to help with uh, 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 keeping the battery voltage up on the system. But uh, there you go. So here's the data collected prior to the mulch having been applied on August 3rd at about 8.30 in the morning. And here's the data posted later that afternoon. Note how quickly the trend is restored to one of having shallow soil temperature be significantly less than air temperature, as was witnessed after the first monsoon storm, only now in the absence of rain. Note my humidity is starting to recover in the shallow profile as well. I'm guessing this is happening in response to the upward movement of moisture from the deeper soil profile 
that is being attenuated thanks to mulch. A closer look at that trend shows that my soil temperature drops by 12 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a huge difference, but will the trend hold? In fact, the trend does hold, with soil temperature measuring significantly lower than air temperature over the next four days, concurrent with buffering of drying on soil humidity in the shallow soil profile through August 6th. And the trend continues to hold through August 11th, with my soil temperature coming in consistently lower than air temperature. However, I do see less buffering in shallow soil humidity levels as time progresses. And here's a 30-day summary captured nicely by Adafruit's IO dashboard. The sensors reporting to the dashboard clearly show the dynamics starting when the rain occurs, continuing as the basin is allowed to dry out uncovered in full sun, and then showing how things change in response to applying mulch with air temperature surpassing shallow soil temperature and the humidity levels in the shallow soil profile briefly being buffered by application of mulch. Looking at the data for this experiment confirms that mulch can, in fact, help with climate change resiliency by lowering soil temperatures by up to 12 degrees Fahrenheit here in Arizona, while keeping soil significantly cooler than air temperature. This is something I originally observed after our only storm this year, with the effect dissipating 80 hours later in the absence of mulch. In turn, I believe these lower temperatures are helping buffer evaporation moving up through my soil profile. This conclusion is especially relevant this year in Tucson, where we've witnessed one of the driest monsoons ever, at least in my 20 plus years of living in this neighborhood, with no rain detected between July 23rd and today, August 12th. This is unfortunately becoming more of the norm for our monsoons here in Tucson, a big change from what I remember when I first moved here back in 1994. These days, we now seem to get these intense monsoons that dump volumes of water in a short amount of time, and then everything goes dry for a couple weeks. In this regards, having a water harvesting system to store those intense rainfall events can also really help, since I can now store those brief periods of rainfall for use during drier periods of the month, as I'll demonstrate shortly. So here's some of the leaves that I spread around my vegetation that I collected from Oak Creek Canyon. Um, uh, you know, having all those scientific measurements is nice, but nothing beats actually uh, moving some leaves around and seeing if you can see anything interesting in terms of bugs or critters or moisture. And sure enough, there is some moisture down here. Also, all kinds of little bugs and stuff that are starting to populate underneath uh, underneath this little mulch mat. So it's kind of neat. I'll revisit this in a few days and see how it's progressing. Let's check in this part of my yard. Maybe there's something going on in here in the sunlight. So you can see sure enough that there is some moisture down here. Let's see if there's anything under this one. And the reason I'm checking is when I looked into this the other day, I actually found a little centipede hanging out underneath uh, these leaves. But there's no centipedes down there right now, unfortunately. Maybe because this is the middle of the day, so they might be heading out, heading underground. So it's August 5th, and I've uh, managed to water my plants manually from uh, water collected from these uh, barrels since the July 23rd storm. And you can see I have quite a bit of vegetation back here. But the idea is not to water all the plants, as I was doing with my uh, drip system uh, before, Rather, just the plants that look like they need the water uh, by tapping into these barrels. And uh, I didn't have a lid to keep the mosquitoes out of this first barrel, but you can see that over the course of the last week or two, you know, it's all been put to good use. And uh, so all three barrels have basically been used to water my yard, and I still have these two barrels right here full of water waiting to be used. And you can tell that by painting the barrels, um, it's done a lot of good as far as uh, preventing algae from growing in the sand. That's all free water that came from the sky. So looking forward to using that to uh, uh, continue watering my fruit tree, my Carolina jasmine where they need it, and, uh, and other vegetation back here. And it's actually kind of nice because uh, I don't need a gym membership anymore. All I need to do is fill my, uh, my buckets 
and uh, walk around the yard and water my plants and uh, uh, that gets me all the exercise I need without having to pay a, g a gym for a, a monthly membership. And there's an old uh, emitter from my uh, uh, from my vegetable garden, which is just sitting here. I haven't had my uh, drip on for a couple weeks now. This is uh, this is all I've had to use to keep these plants alive. And you can see some of the mulch from uh, Oak Creek Canyon. I've spread around to uh, keep these plants going.